Hey guys, it's Mr. Baguette here with another map guide. Today we're going to focus on a daunting map, Cafe Dostoevsky. While this map has been in the game since the beginning, with a slight rework during Operation Phantom Sight in 2019, it can be incredibly challenging for players. I'm not going to take you through a tour of the map because there's already an excellent video for our walkthrough done by Ubisoft. You can find that link in the description below. And some of the clips I've used here in the beginning are from that video. You can see it's really well put together and perfect for anyone who needs to learn the layout of Cafe. I instead am going to teach you how to defend and then attack this map so you can be less afraid of playing this map when you boot up Siege. I'll also give you the reasons why certain things are done so you can begin to think about these things on all maps rather than just Cafe. So let's dive into the defenses first and then we'll lead into the attacks after that. So, I'll take you through the most commonly defended sites first, and then move into the least common at the end. So, let's first take a look at the map from a top-down view. The most common site is going to be the bar and cocktail site on the third floor. You're going to notice that all these red diagonal lines are soft floors. However, there aren't those red diagonals, those are going to be the power positions for defenders. The power positions are going to be at pixel door, top white or planks, and cigar shop. These are areas that you can't be naded from below, which adds a layer of difficulty for attackers when trying to clear a defender. Another defender that makes this top floor defense even stronger is Azami. With her Kiba barrier, she can extend control into piano and play more aggressively to contest attackers who are trying to come in from new balk or top red. Most attacks that you're going to face are going to be trying to take control of the piano area of the map. There's multiple windows in piano and you have the two hatches, so they can get a lot of pressure on that piano area. So how exactly do we set up sight against this? So we'll start out with whoever is on shotgun duty and making the rotates. First, you want to make this rotate into cocktail at S1. You want to make some high head holes in order to be able to stand on the cocktail bar and contest the default plant. Make a rotate into freezer. Always make it on that left side when facing freezer. That way you can't get caught rotating from the skylight. Make a rotate into bathroom from freezer and then make some head holes here on bathroom continuing into piano you'll want to make some feet holes along this piano wall that way whoever's playing pixel can defend the new hatch or the default plant as well if you have someone with a shotgun or an oryx you want to open up these bars the reason why we're opening these bars is because we want to be able to deny the plant but without having to swing over those bars. So you can see what the site looks like with all the rotates. Now for the reinforcements, you'll see you've got one reinforcement next to that rotate you made on cocktail. You have another reinforcement here on the right side of freezer and all the freezer walls reinforced except for the one rotate that you've made into bathroom. You have the opposite bathroom wall reinforced of the head holes. It's a player choice of what head holes you want to make, either the left or the right. It just gives you additional contest towards people walking into piano from the top red wall. And here you can see those feet holes allowing you to contest new hatch and the default plant. And of course you've got those top red walls reinforced as well. And if you have a mute, you can play inside the humidor with your shotgun. And if you ADS, you can catch them while they're dropping. And they're generally pretty free kills. Now, there's a, a second variation that you can do for this top floor defense. And you can see I'm opening up the freezer walls here rather than reinforcing them. And the reason is we have a mirror. So if mirror is available, you can play this site a little bit differently. And you can have a mirror wall facing freezer and piano you can see i'm going to make a rotate here and then place a mirror on the opposite side i'm clearing that debris because then it it prevents any debris from being on the mirror wall itself and it gives you a clear sight of piano so once you pop this mirror wall there obviously you're protected from that cocktail window unless you swing out but this gives you visual of all of piano. You have two options for your second mirror, either in bathroom or on cocktail. You can see if you were to pop your mirror on this wall, you do have visual of the default plant and you can swing and stop the plant. The other option is 
you can put it on this cocktail bar because this wall should be reinforced and that way you can watch the cigar shop entrance and the shiko position it's your choice of where you want to put your second mirror i would recommend the freezer mirror being obligatory if you're going to take a mirror because then it forces the attackers to look at so many different angles as they're walking into piano the other thing that you'll want to do if you do have a mirror is make sure that you have a jaeger or Wamai. that way you can protect this mirror spot with either ads's or Wamai magnets in order of importance for a lineup i would pick these operators Number one, I'd take Izami. She's just way too strong not to take and can basically hold piano by herself. Secondly, I'd take Wamai or Jaeger. The magnets or ADSs can help Izami keep control of piano for the whole round and can stop nades from cocktail if you bring a Mira. Number three would be Mute. You can stop drones from finding defenders by muting off all of Cigar and muting the red wall. You can also help stop Flora's drones from destroying any of the Kiba barriers. Fourth, I would take an Oryx, but that's just to speed up the process of making rotates and destroying the bars. Your fifth operator can be a flex, it can be anyone. So if you're solo, pick a zombie. If you're in a duo, take a zombie and Wamai. If you're a trio, take a zombie, Wamai, and mute. If you do this, you might be unstoppable on the top floor. Yes, new balcony. Uh, now onto a first floor defense of kitchen and service. Looking above the first floor at the second floor blueprint, we can see there's a lot of potential vertical for the attack. They can open up all above kitchen, all of freezer, half of prep, and half of service. This means that you'll have to spread out your defense horizontally to contest areas that are safe from above. These areas are going to be coat check, bakery, and potentially whiskey. Attackers will try a variety of takes, either bakery or freezer, and the potential combination of taking the top floor to make vertical on the site. So, how do you set up against that? Well, here's two options that you can do to help defend the first floor on Cafe. The first variation is going to be with head holes on the red wall. The second variation is fully reinforcing the red wall. It is entirely up to you and your team how you want to play it. Me, personally, I prefer having head holes on the red wall because it allows you to contest areas as a team and doesn't trap everyone in the site if the attackers do get vertical. So, for the reinforcements on the first variation, you want to reinforce the red wall closest to the bakery side, reinforce the two bakery walls on kitchen, reinforce the right side of prep, the single bakery wall next to the counter, the two freezer walls, the freezer hatch, and one of the walls in between the two sites. For feet holes and high head holes, you want feet holes on the left side of prep wall, this allows people in prep to either impact trick and ace charge or contest the bakery door. You want feet holes next to the service double door. You want high head holes next to the kitchen double. And you want head holes on the right red wall. This allows someone to play in coat check. For the second variation, you set up the site exactly the same way, except you're using a reinforcement instead of making head holes on the red wall. Now, why should you play with head holes on red wall? As I said earlier, it places someone in coat. And when we look at the angles that you can get from coat check, you can help deny entry into small bakery or wedding. You can shoot a Selma off the wedding wall and you can help prevent backstabs from whiskey or reception. You can then have a second teammate playing the head holes to stop a jump into wedding and also watch red stairs. This promotes incredible team play and makes it difficult for attackers to get in the bakery side of the building. If you're doing this hold, I would also recommend that you have a Jaeger or Wumai playing in bakery to make it more difficult for the attackers to get entry into bakery. You can bring a mute Bandit or Cade to help the bakery stay closed. I would also recommend putting Denial on the freezer walls to keep those sealed as well. I personally think having two Denial operators is ideal for this site. You can also have someone playing Prep or Rice as well to help the Jaeger or Mai in bakery. I would have your last player playing Bunker or Coffee to help stop a push into freezer or the service double door. My ideal lineup would include Wamai, Cade, and Mute in that order with two flex operators. Fenrir and Maestro are also very strong for this site. Now, the third site that you'll want to play is second floor reading and fireplace. This is a site that you'll want to hold from above in order to win your rounds. For your reinforcements, we'll start out with the top floor on cocktail. You'll want to reinforce all five of these walls. So now with all of these cocktail walls reinforced and the freezer walls reinforced, you'll want to head down and reinforce the right side wall facing fireplace and then you'll come into reading and you'll reinforce the two pillar walls 
And the last wall that you'll want to reinforce is this wall to the right of the fireplace. Regarding rotates, you'll only need to make two. You'll make one to the left of this reinforcement that you placed earlier. And that's a vault rotate, just so you have a line of sight into fireplace. And the other rotate that you want to make is into reading from laundry. And you'll also want to open the laundry hatch because that's going to allow for rotations from your players who are top floor in order to drop down safely into the site. Now for sight lines, you want to make sure that you have feet holes all the way across fireplace and then head holes on the reading side. And the reason we want to do that is because you can actually contest a walk into fireplace from deep in reading. And you can also contest the people that push 90. The player on whites, their responsibility is going to be making sure that nobody pushes up white stairs, but they can also contest the walk into fireplace. Even if that wall is soft, you can reinforce it if you want to. But the purpose of this is to make sure that you've got the fireplace covered. And obviously with the player in reading, you can have a double cross in case they do actually push through. Now, you'll also want to have two players upstairs. And you'll probably want one player playing here on white so they can contest a push from piano. And you'll you'll also want a player that's in cocktail. All right, so you're going to be contesting anyone that's walking in from New Hatch to Shiko or walking into shop. But the whole point of holding upstairs is actually to have vertical on the site beneath you. So if you come to the far end of cocktail, you can actually make vert on the reading door and you can see the default plant spot. Most teams are gonna try to get into reading and plant in that spot there. So you can actually contest this from upstairs. And if you have two people upstairs with ADSs, and you are protected from grenades and flashes from the attacking team that's going to be trying to take that side of the map. So ideally, I would have a Jaeger or Romai that would be playing upstairs, helping hold the vertical. Obviously, you also want someone who has a shotgun to make the vertical sight lines above the site in order to play that walk-in. And you can have a second player just holding these top white stairs. Obviously, the white stairs we've gone over, that's an important position. They have to protect white stairs, but also I'll walk in to fireplace, and they can also help 90. And you'll have a player in reading that can help defend the walk in to snow door, but they can also help the walk in to fireplace and help the teammate on white if they know someone's pushing from the white stairs. The last player can be a roamer, they can be a flexible player they can play pillar this is generally a pretty safe spot they can hold their walk into mining they just have to worry about brown stairs and if they swing out they have to worry about this snow door but if they stay tucked they don't necessarily have to worry about it this pillar player can also help the top four players and test the new hatch so if somebody is swinging from new hatch this player can help get them before they get to Shiko. For an ideal lineup, I would want to take a Smoke or a Mute, a Capcan, a Rooney, a Jaeger, or a Mai, and then the last operator should be some sort of roaming operator. If you decide to take an Aruni, you can place a Serial Gate on this reading door, and then I would use my other two gates upstairs to help the top floor attack. I would use one on the Pixel door, and then I would also use one on the double cocktail door. And these gates are obviously just to help out the teammates that have already reinforced all these walls upstairs. And it helps slow down a push from piano. Now, another operator that I like to bring on this site is Capcan. Because he can slow down any of these rushes or take chip damage as attackers are working their way through the building. If they see that you're holding heavy upstairs, there's a large chance that they will try to push through a piano. So you can see, obviously, with your five traps, you can place them wherever you'd like. But the goal of Capcan is to either slow them down or take damage. And personally, as Capcan, I like to put one trap 
on five different doors sometimes you can put two if you want to get that kill right so if you're playing without in a rooney and you don't have a sir you get here maybe you want to put two on this door because it forces people to swing and look down here but if you have a player on top white that person can swing if these cap can traps are getting shot and then generally i like to put a cap can trap on the mining double door as well granted it can get shot from this window but on the attacking side or coming from the hatch walking down here they're going to be keeping their eyes more towards the site rather than checking the door on the bottom left so capgan is a very useful operator for this site as well just to slow down the attackers and give you more time on the vertical play now the fourth site of mining and fireplace is one that you're rarely going to see you'll probably see it in casual but you won't see it in unranked or ranked just because it is not as viable as the other three sites but you'll want to maintain the same principle as the reading room site so you can see in this entire room the ceiling is soft there is a hatch in here so we want to use the same concepts that we learned from the third site and apply them here. Instead of holding the cocktail side, you'll want to hold the piano side. I'm not gonna give a detailed plan of where to use your reinforcements because it's really your choice. Obviously, if you're holding upstairs, you'll probably want to reinforce the red wall. You can make vertical on the windows so you can stop the mining jump in. And if they are in the sites from red wall, you can deny a plant there. So you can use the vertical to your advantage. You can either play with this hatch reinforced and play your life upstairs, or you can open the hatch and use it to rotate down to the site later. It really depends on how you want to play it. I think this site is a little bit more difficult to defend, but I think you would apply a mix of the other sites of the third floor bar defense by reinforcing this red wall, reinforcing this bathroom wall, and playing head holes, because then that stops them from walking into mini bar or ticket and you can get an angle on people walking in there but essentially you're going to apply those vertical principles you can cover mining the only problem is you can't necessarily cover fireplace from the vertical so you'll use the same principle that we had on the other site of having a player on white stairs so you can have a mix of vertical you can have a player on white stairs and if you really wanted to you could have a player in reading maybe a player with impacts so if you leave this pillar wall soft you could impact out and then fight mining but you would still have these head holes and the feet holes there to make sure that you can contest fireplace if they're getting in there but realistically in ranked or unranked you're probably not going to be playing this site because you only have three defensive halves so the three best sites are obviously going to be top floor the third floor bar and cocktail second best site is going to be the kitchen third is going to be reading and fireplace and this would be your fourth best option unless you have a really cool pocket strat for it i wouldn't recommend playing this site so i'm not going to give you a detailed plan for reinforcements on this site we already know what the strengths are of each site because we've gone over each site in detail and how to defend it and what the power positions are so let's see how we can break that down as an attack and make sure that we have more successful attacks on cafe let's start out with spawn points though because one of the things that you need to worry about are spawn peak on cafe defenders are incredibly aggressive and they're always trying to get that first pick on the river dock spawn you have to worry about it, the dining window reception window and the pillar window as well as the snow door and the cocktail balcony it is possible to jump out that window and on the other side you have to worry about the small bakery window the museum jump out which is the red window and also the top floor window for christmas market which is the western spawn you have to worry about the cigar lounge windows on the top floor and the bakery double and of course they can still hop out that museum window to attack the christmas market and lastly we've got the park spawn where you've got a few windows that you have to worry about fireplace and the top floor windows as well as bottom white
And of course, someone could jump out white stairs if they wanted to. So now that you've cautiously made it out of spawn, let's see how to attack the top floor. So obviously the most common take is going to be the piano take. You're gonna be taking from the Western side of the map and you're gonna try to get that map control before you can get a plant down in the bar. So there's a common workflow that you're gonna to wanna to do. The first thing that you'll wanna do is get to the roof. Obviously you wanna avoid the spawn peak so you don't need to rush it, you have three minutes. Second thing that you'll wanna do every time you're attacking the top floor is make sure that you open the hatches. So it's going to be important that you have someone who either has a secondary shotgun, a DMR, or a soft breach in order to open the hatch. Third, you're going to want to try to get piano control. You can do this by repelling on the windows, opening the red wall, and also pressuring from the cigar shop. The power position that we learned about is obviously pixel door, which is that door at the end of the white hall. The goal is to try to get control of that area and then open up the trash wall for a plant. Once you've gotten that control, if you have someone still on the skylight, you can hold the cross and you can attempt to get a plant down on the trash wall. Now, obviously there's a lot of questions to process. Should we plant default, which is by Shiko, or should we plant trash? Is there anyone in freezer? Where are the enemies? Do we have cameras? Is there one below? All of these questions are things that you have to ask, but if you do the take properly, you're going to be droning out the enemies to make sure you know where everyone is. When you are taking piano control, you also want to make sure that you have people watching the flanks. This can easily be done by watching from the hatch on red for any potential red flanks. Your other flank watch after you take piano control is going to be watching the white hall. That's the only other place that they can push to get you. If a plant isn't possible, then you have to push for kills. Obviously, we know the power positions are going to be cocktail and top white. Of course, enemies could be in freezer. So you have to make sure that you are checking those areas as you're swinging, if you have no intel. The other question is, but Mr. Baguette, what if they have a mirror? If they have a mirror, then you'll have to do a cocktail take. This is gonna be the opposite side. You're gonna be taking the east side of the building and your workflow is going to be different yet similar. You'll do the same first steps, get to the roof, open the hatches. Secondly, because you are going to be repelled on the windows on the east side, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you claim more of the jump outs. That's usually going to be the white window and also the snow door slash heaven window. What you'll need are some flashes, some nades, some smokes in order to burn the ADSs and try to nade the mirror that's going to be on the freezer wall at top white. Usually this strat works quite well if you use a ying. You can use a ying from the skylight and roll it onto cocktail and that can help your players who are on the cocktail repel to swing in and kill any enemies. There is also potential of entering in below the snow no door and you can take either a buck or frag grenades and you can drone out people on cocktail and try to get a grenade from below and this will make it easier and make you more confident when you're actually swinging into cocktail ideally when you're going to be planting you'll want to plant within view of the c3 window cocktail window that way you can play on repel after you've planted, you can be upside down. You can force the defender to jump out the window or have to kill you on the repel before they can defuse. All right, now let's move into the kitchen attack. We've got a couple variations of our kitchen attacks and they both require teamwork to succeed easily, but one is easier than the other. So let's start with that. The first take is going to be a bakery take. Ideally, you'd have two hard breachers, Ace and Thermite, a Thatcher if he's available. If he's not available, then take an operator with secondary EMPs, a set of nades, and a Nomad. For a step-by-step -step take, this is what you want to do. Obviously, first and foremost, with the other attacks, avoid spawn peaks. You want as many players alive as possible for the attack. Second, have Nomad start at the wedding window, throw a flashbang through it just to burn any magnets or ADSs that might be placed there and then air jab the wedding double door. This is setting up the flank for once you actually have bakery control. Thirdly, the wedding wall is likely going to be reinforced to protect the player in bakery. So your ace should be starting at the wedding window with Nomad. Fourth, this is where Nomad is going to have to get aggressive. You still have two flashes left. When the ace throws his Selma on the wedding wall, you have to be ready to flash red hall and jump in the window. This is to make sure that defenders don't shoot the Selma charge and you can guarantee that the wedding wall gets opened. Fifth, if Nomad jumps in the window, they get a kill. They should remain in wedding or get back out the window to make sure that they're holding for more flank. While 
all of this is happening on the wedding side, there should be two players at the bakery double door, one with flashes, one with nades. Or alternatively, you could be using Thatcher's EMP to turn off any ADSs or magnets in the, in the proximity. Using the flashes, you throw them over the counter to burn any potential magnets or ADSs, and then you follow that up with a nade toss to try to kill whoever's behind the bakery counter. The bakery player is either going to potentially run behind the shelf or he's going to run back to prep. Either way, you should have a gun up ready to catch him while he's running away. If you've successfully opened up the wedding wall, then you can actually see the spots that this counter player is going to be running to. He can only run to the shelf or he can run into prep. If you have that wedding wall open, you can see the run back to prep and you can see from the window through the wedding door, the shelf area where he would hide as well. And finally, once bakery is clear, you should take immediately the control of it. The two bakery door players should walk in behind the counter, but keep your eyes on prep in case someone swings. After you have the ba bakery control is when you open up the prep wall with Ace. An Ace can open up the prep wall and then he can hold it from upside on repel to stop any defenders from pushing through to bakery. Now, this is where you'll need your EMP and the thermites obviously the EMPs are going to get a cade or a bandit off the wall and allow the thermite to open up the wall so make sure that you drone this out there is a drone hole at bottom red stairs you can drone it out and see if they have a cade where the cade is if they have bandits where the bandits are that way you can get your EMPs placed in the correct spot for the thermite to open up the wall now this next part is optional if there is a defender in coat that is being a problem, you can create pressure with your nades by going reception. Your nomad and the nades player can work together to clear the defender in coat. So your nades player will work from reception door. Nomad, obviously still outside the wedding window, they can both pinch this defender in coat and try to eliminate that player. And that's only going to be likely if the defenders have head holes on the red wall. The goal is to get a plant down behind the bomb chassis, which is next to the prep door. You can plant there safely tucked behind the chassis. You can't be seen from the freezer side of the site. A player would have to swing either the red hall head holes to deny the plant or have smokes from bunker. Once you get that plant down, post plant, you should just wait as long as possible for the defenders to push because now you finally have time on your side. And this should end in either the timer running out and the defender not being able to defuse or the attackers killing the last defender as he tries to make it to the defuser. So obviously these takes are all theoretical and they work if you work well as a team. It won't always be perfect and smooth. Sometimes you'll lose someone to a spawn peak, but when it is executed properly, you get to see the true beauty of Rainbow Six Siege. Now for the second take, this is going to be a freezer take and it requires a lot more map control. This take requires more teamwork and droning than the first option. If you want to open freezer, you have to worry about the whiskey area. You have to worry about brown stairs. You have to worry about white stairs flanks because there are so many more things to worry about. You need to get full map control. So starting out in prep phase, place drones at the top of red and white stairs. Stay on those drones until players are able to get to the roof and to get into the top floor so you can safely take that map control. If there are no defenders on top floor, this makes it very easy. The attackers can now just drop down the skylight or drop the hatches and get top white control and top red control at the start. Now those two players will have to wait at the top floor waiting at the top of the steps for those teammates that initially held the drone because they need to catch up. So those two players are going to be holding the flanks on red and white and the initial droners are going to be making their way so they can get close to those areas as well. Now, once you've grouped up, once these players are all together, you have to dedicate someone to droning the second floor. Now, this is easy. If there are no roamers on the second floor, you can take control of the second floor pretty quickly. If you have a buck or sledge, both of them should be heading to fireplace. If you have a nomad or a gridlock, those flank watch operators, then they should be placing their utility on red, brown, and white stairs to prevent a flank on the vertical players later in the round. And lastly, your hard breacher should be heading down white stairs. Obviously, 
Before heading down the stairs, you want to make sure to drone VIP whiskey and bottom white before walking all the way down. Your vertical players should be able to get any denial off the freezer wall from above. And if you bring hard rate chargers on buck, you can also open the freezer hatch. After the freezer wall is open, make sure you drone out and find out where opponents are. If there is someone playing in the sinks, which is next to the freezer window, make sure that you get vertical on that spot and try to push that player out. If someone is bunker, you can actually get an angle from mining with buck to stop that player from hiding there you can see the entirety of bunker from vertical in the mining area once those two spots are clear sinks and bunker you are free to go for a plant behind the bomb chassis your vertical players can hold the service double door and a kitchen double door from above but i would also have a player next to the planter to hold the service double door and wait for any potential swings or potential c4s your last player should still be in the boots or vip area to wait for flanks from whiskey it's important to note that your vertical players also have to be aware of any air jab or gridlock track noises that go off if they hear people shooting the tracks or if they hear an air jab go off they should be pulling off of the vertical and waiting for the flank to arrive isolating that one-on-one -on -one battle and hopefully winning it is way more important than constantly pressuring the vertical on the side site because if that vertical player dies to a flank, that vertical now becomes useful for the opponents later in the round. You can see all the coordination that this requires, which I think makes it more difficult. It requires teammates droning each other and making quick decisions to take parts of the map. Everyone has a job, and if someone gets lost early, it will make the job much tougher. Ideally for this lineup, I would take a Nomad, Buck, and Thermite in that order, a Sledge, and then any other operator. Potentially an operator that can help you clear the roam faster, such as a Jackal or a dokubi now let's move into the last attack that you'll want to know which is going to be for reading and fireplace just like the freezer take for the kitchen attack you're going to want to start by taking the top floor of the map we saw on the defensive side that holding the cocktail side of the map on the top floor is an important strength for the defenders if they lose control of that area they've just allowed attackers to get full vertical on the entire reading site and the fireplace hallway so how do you attack this get to the roof open the hatches again that's something that you're going to want to get in your brain when you're attacking cafe most of the time you're going to be getting to the roof and opening those hatches secondly this is going to be a combination of the piano clear and cocktail take in order to be successful you want to drone out piano new hatch cigar shop and freezer if there are no players then try to take control of those areas as fast as possible try to get a player in piano try to get a player in shop and eventually these players are going to try to help collapse on the players in cocktail. Now, if you are getting contested by a player in piano, for example, you can try to apply multiple points of pressure to kill that one player from the windows or from cigar shop. After eliminating that player, make sure that you have a player ready to pressure from the bar, one from the white hall, and then try to get a player on repel in the cocktail windows using flashbangs or stun utility. This could be a Zofia, for example. She's very useful as well because she does have two claymores to protect herself from jump outs from white window or snow door. But you're all going to be working together to kind of collapse on these defenders in cocktail. And after you've won your fights in cocktail, and you have full control of it, that's when you're going to be setting up flank watch for red and white. Those are the only two areas that somebody's going to be coming from unless they have an Oryx that could jump the train hatch. This could simply just be someone who died in an engagement, watching two drones, just flicking back and forth between the red and white drone, and able to call out if someone is walking up the stairs. So the goal after having vertical is to walk into the snow door and get a plant down on default near the bookcase inside of reading. You don't really need a hard reacher for this site, but you should have a bucker sledge to help make vertical. Now, if the defenders don't hold upstairs, then you should take cocktail as quick as possible. And then you have flank watch for white and red stairs quickly. A fun operator that you can use for quick vertical and maybe some surprise kills would be Fuse. If no one is playing Cocktail, Fuse can place a cluster charge on the C3 window and Fuse three times. Why three times? The first Fuse breaks the top layer of the floor, the second breaks the bottom layer of the floor, and then the third Fuse, if it's placed in the same spot because they have the same pattern, the third Fuse will send four pucks flying into the reading site below and will catch defenders off guard. Now, after having vertical, you can watch the reading door, you can watch the laundry rotate, and you can see pillars from above on heaven while the plant is going down so you can prevent any defenders from reaching the planter if this is done correctly. Now, for the mining and fireplace site, which I didn't give you a full setup defensively, 
effectively for, you're going to apply the same concepts as this attack. You want to take vertical, but in piano instead of cocktail. You want to try to plant in mining because you can maintain vertical on that site. And obviously all of these attacks are ideal situations. I wouldn't expect every attack to go flawlessly, but this is a utopic idea of how to attack each site on cafe. By continuously touching on the ideas of map control, there's hope that you'll begin to apply this universal concept on other maps as well. It is important for attackers to drone areas of the map and take control of it so it gives defenders more restrictions and the feeling of being clustered, pushing them to a point where they might make mistakes. I've also included here at the end some basic callout sheets for the all three floors. They aren't the greatest callouts, but they're going to be ones that you hear consistently in rank, and it will help give you a leg up on knowing where certain things are so you can better react on the fly. If this guide helped you, please make sure to subscribe, like, and comment to get this to more people, and I'll be able to continue getting guides out as quick as I can to everyone. Thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next video.